The Mysterious Death of Paul McCartney. Welcome to Trick and Mickey. Please support this channel by subscribing, share, and like. At the end of the video, please leave a commentary at the bottom. Thank you very much for listening and spreading the word that Trick and Mickey is here. Share and like. In this episode, we're going to analyze very carefully all the facts, evidence, details, and proof that Paul McCartney is dead, that he died in 1966. You be the judge with all the information I'm going to give you. Paul McCartney, 1942, 1966, question mark. From the moment he was born, Paul seemed marked for tragedy. An astrologer once told him, beware of success, for it will bring an early death. Did he die of a car accident back in 1966? And did the Beatles know about this and leave clues in all of their albums? We're going to explore all of this information. Tra the tragic news went worldwide. At the end of the year 1966, headlines all over the world reported that Paul McCartney died in a car accident. This hysteria swept Great Britain first and then America and then the rest of the world. The Beatles Corporation was bombarded with questions. Was Paul McCartney dead? Why hasn't he been seen in a week and a half? Where is he? It happened November the 7th, 1969. November the 7th, 1969, Paul McCartney's death rocks minds of millions. Hysteria and pandemonium was happening all over the world because one of the Beatles was dead just when the Beatle was very, very popular and Beatlemania has swept the world. People couldn't believe it. People were even contemplating suicide because Paul McCartney died. How did, how did it happen? How did Paul McCartney allegedly die? Paul McCartney was killed in an automobile accident in early November 1966 after leaving EMI recording studios tired, sad, and dejected. Allegedly, he had an argument, the original Paul McCartney, with John Lennon and the Beatles regarding something that was being rehearsed for a new album. And he was very despondent, so he got in his car and he drove away. And it happened on September the 11th, 1966. Here you see a picture that somebody took at that time. And it happened at 5 o'clock in the morning, Paul McCartney was killed in a car crash. Allegedly, he picked up a, uh, a girl at the road who was hitchhiking and she died along with him. But all of this was hushed up very quickly by MF5, MF5 which is the FBI of Great Britain. You see here a picture that was taken by one of the persons at the scene of the accident. And it showed that Paul McCartney was partially decapitated and his brain was on the road that he had cr crashed into a tree because the girl once she recognized him just threw herself on him and he lost control of the car and smashed into a tree you're looking now at what remained of Paul McCartney's car all of this quickly MFI hushed up because MFI the FBI of the of Great Britain was afraid that there was going to be mass suicide all over the world if this news was verified that yes Paul McCartney was dead so MFI quickly told the Beatles to deny everything and say Paul McCartney is on holiday on vacation touring America in the 1960s let us go back to the 1960s the early 1960s you see here the Beatles at the Ed Sullivan show the Ed Sullivan show was a very important uh, variety show entertainment on CBS back in the early 1960s the clues begin the Beatles began to leave clues in their albums and also there are other means of determining the truth here you see the Fab Four notice how tall Paul McCartney was back in the early 1960s he was shorter than John Lennon and shorter than George Harrison as you can see in these pictures Paul McCartney was shorter. He was only taller than Ringo Starr. This is the first clue about how short Paul McCartney was. He was approximately 5'8 or 5'9. 
Introducing William Shear Campbell. You're looking at two pictures of two different individuals. This, these pictures from 1966 shows the great resemblance between Paul McCartney on the left and William Shear Campbell on the right at the time of Paul McCartney's uh, alleged death. As you can see, they're two different people and yet they look the same. They're similar. The differences in height. First, let's examine. As you can see on the left of this picture, you see Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney was approximately 5'9", mm, and then William Shear Campbell, who took his place, was 5'10 and 11. You see now, this guy in the middle is taller than John Lennon on the left and taller than George Harrison. If you saw in the early pictures that I showed you in this video, Paul McCartney was shorter Paul McCartney, uh, clue number seven. Paul m mysteriously grew several inches after his death. Here is a picture of him with his girlfriend, Jane Asher, before and after 1966. As you can see in the second photo, he is significantly taller than Jane compared to his first picture. And on the left, they're practically the same height. And then on the right, he is taller than she. That's the first clue, the height differences. The ears are not the same. Look at the ears. On, on the uh, left, they're detached. And on the right, it's attached. The Paul McCartney that you see on the right side of the picture, he's from 1966. He had attached ears. Again, notice anything about the ears. On the left here, you have Paul McCartney. You see how his ears are attached. And on the, on the right picture, this false Paul, Paul McCartney, William Shear Campbell, his earlobes are detached. This is a clue right there. Let us now look at the teeth. They're not the same. As you can see, the dentals are totally different. I know what you're thinking. Well, he could have had dental work. Well, this, these pictures were taken before 1966 and right after 1966. So you can see in the mouth, Paul McCartney on the right here had teeth that were a little bit more el elongated. What about the scar on the lip? Paul McCartney had a accident on his moped. He fell and did damage to his, his lip. As you can see, he had a scar. This was the original Paul McCartney. He had surgery done to correct this, and it left a scar. Now, this is another clue. This Paul McCartney had a scar, not on the outside, but on the inside of the lips. This was done to give him a resemblance to the original Paul McCartney. The problem is, it's not the same scar, and it's not in exactly the same place. So this demonstrates something is wrong with these two different Paul McCartney. The eyes are not the same. Here's a picture of Paul McCartney prior to 1966. As you can see, his eyes are brown. Paul McCartney's eyes were brown back in 1966. But this Paul McCartney that we have now, his eyes are hazel. They're very light and clear, like almost bluish green. Here's another picture. Look at the picture on the right of the impersonator. This guy's eyes are light, while the one on the left, the original Paul McCartney, his eyes are dark. These are evident clues that there is something different about this Paul McCartney. The levels of the eyes and, and hairs are different. Look at the Paul McCartney on the left. His hair texture is different, and his, he has a lower left eye. Now the Paul McCartney on the right, his texture of hair is different, and his eyes are on the same level. This is either a coincidence or further evidence that something's different. Different shape to the face. The Paul McCartney of 1966 had a more rounded face. The Paul McCartney on the right has a more elongated, longer face. This does not 
happen to adults. They don't change that much. Paul McCartney is dead. The shock includes collection. The Beatles, as I told you, left a lot of clues in, the, in their album covers, in their music over the years to tell you that Paul McCartney is dead. Here on the cover of Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band, you see down here where the arrow is, there is a guitar facing to the left because Paul McCartney was left-handed. You can see that this is in a, in a grave. So he's saying, here lies, let's get it here, here lies Paul. Now you see a hand over Paul McCartney's. This is a Hindu symbol regarding death. The Beatles in those days were into Hinduism. And so this is a symbol that Paul McCartney is dead. Get it? Here lies Paul. What is this on this, this cover? What are they, the Beatles trying to tell us? They're leaving clues. Here's another clue. On the cover of Sgt. Pepper, there are four wax figures of the younger Beatles. Pre-Paul's death, the figure of Paul, George, and John are on the same height. But in the picture of them, on the right, Paul is considerably taller than all of his Beatle mates. The wax figures were made to the specification of the Beatle of 1964. The Beatles are, are, are reflected analog height. This is an indication that they're telling you. If you see the mark that Paul here on the right is taller. Here's another clue. If you place a a mirror halfway through the bass drum on the cover of Sgt. Pepper, you see the words one is dead. The first two numbers can be considered and it's the 11th month of November, while the IX can be in the Roman numeral for 9. Now the numbers read 11966. Paul is dead. Yeah, really, really dead. This was on their album that when they were singing. And if you put it backward on the Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band, it will tell you Paul is dead. Yeah, really, really dead. And Paul is facing away from on this album cover. Why is all of this occurring? Because it is showing you. I want you to look at George on the on the left, far left. He's pointing to to something on the uh, the album regarding one of their music, and it's a clue. George Harrison is telling you a clue that Paul McCartney is dead. Now look at this. It says. She's leaving home Wednesday morning at 5 o'clock. The day begins. This is a clue that indicates that Paul McCartney died on Wednesday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning when the day begins. This is another clue the Beatles were leaving. Here is another one. Special Paul McCartney dead. Turn me on, dead man. He blew his mind out in a car. I buried Paul. This was in the album. But you have to play the album backwards to hear a distinctive man sounding like John Lennon saying that Paul McCartney is dead. Paul is dead clue number 17. On the cover of the Beatles anthology, there's a vertical line through the young Paul's McCartney's head symbolizing the 1966 decapitation. You see that, you see that line? It's indicating that he blew out his mind out in a car with a car accident. Here's another uh, uh, dead clue. On the cover of Let It Be, Paul is facing a different direction than the other members and has a, a, a background of blood red. All of this is indicating blood red that he had a bad car accident and that he's dead and that he's facing in a different direction from all the Beatles. This is indicative of some type of death. Here we have more Paul is dead clues. Number one, you see Paul is shoeless. In Great Britain, they bury the dead without their shoes on because it's their custom. Paul was left-handed. Why is this Paul having a cigarette in his right hand? Also, all the Beatles are walking synchronized while Paul is the only one out of step. That's more further clue. Here's you have more, more, more clue number 19. The original pair was left-handed. But on the cover, Albie Robe, he's holding a cigarette in his right hand and leading with his right foot. All of this is indicative that something is being told to us. Messages are being left, left to us. 
This is very evident in all of the clues. And they left more clue. The Volkswagen, the Volkswagen car on the cover of Abbey Road displays a license plate that says 28i5. I when this album came out, Paul would have been 28 if he was still alive. All of this is, can't be just coincident. Here we have more. On the back cover of Abbey Road, there are a series of eight dots next to the word Beatles. These dots can be connected to form the number three. Now that three means that those are the only three original Beatles left. More indication. Here we have another one, Paul is dead clue. You see how the, the line is cracked over the S? This is indicative of a clue that st states that the Beatles are not complete, that one of them is m missing. The clues in the album cover. The white VW Beetle in the background has the registration LMW28IF. 28 being the age conspiracy theorist says Paul McCartney would have been if he had died. In fact, he was 27 when the Abbey Road was released. In the background, a small group of people dressed in white stands on the, the side of the road while a lone person stands on the other. Is this meant to be that Paul alone is different from the other? On the right hand side is a black police van, believed to be a reference to the police who kept quiet on Paul's death. A line can be drawn from the right wheel of the cars on the left that runs through Paul's head, suggesting he died of a head injury. Oh, all of this is more clues left by the Be Beatles de uh, deliberately. Here we have Free as a Bird music video. A cheap dog can be seen running through a graveyard. Is this Paul's beloved dog, Martha, searching for her master? Paul is dead. Clue number 11. The Beatles va vary together. This album cover was released in Canada. Quite obviously, the snuff out candle is supposed to represent that the dead Paul. Why would four candles be lit and one extinguished unless they're telling you Paul is dead? Paul is dead clue number 13. In one of the Magical Mystery Tour booklet photos, you can see that Paul appears to be barefoot and his shoes sit next to the drum stained with blood. You can barely see it in this photo, but in the album cover, you can clearly see that Paul McCartney is barefoot and his shoes are next to the drum, covered in something red. Why would they put that there? George Harrison's last testimony. Before Ger George Harrison died, he left some video cassettes that Paul McCartney really is dead, the last testament of George Harrison. He wanted to leave this world because George Harrison died of cancer, but he did not want to leave this world without telling the final truth, his last testimony. He left two audio cassettes and they were sent to a radio station under special care that they be played. And played they were. And the voice on the cassette sounded very much like George Harrison. And he told the story of how they were told to be silent by MF MFI that they wanted to prevent a mass suicide all over the world and that they did this not to deceive the fan but to prevent people from committing suicide. Paul is dead. Clue number 20. George Harrison's song when he was fa when we were fab about his time with the Beatles contains the lyrics casualty at dawn and is believed that Paul fatal accident occurred in the early morning of November at five o'clock in the morning. What did Ringo Starr say in an interview? Paul McCartney really is dead, the last testimony of George Harrison. But Ringo Starr said a, f a couple of years ago that Paul really is dead, that he died in 1966 and was replaced by a lookalike. But what are the specific information that he gave in that interview? When Paul died, we all panicked, claims Ringo. Obviously very emotional. We didn't know what to do and Brian Epstein, our manager, suggested that we hire Bill, Billy Shears as a temporary solution. It was supposed to only last a week or two, but time went by and nobody seemed to notice, so we kept playing along. Billy turned out to be a pretty good musician and he was able to perform 
almost better than Paul. The only problem was that he did, could not get along with John at all. Again, you can see the difference between Paul McCartney in 1966 and the Paul McCartney that replaced him in the band. This is why the Beatles eventually broke up in 1970. This fall, Paul McCartney could not get along well with uh, John Lennon. I've always had this thing, thing of him and me. He goes on stage, he's famous, and then me. I'm just some kid from Liverpool. Occasionally I stop and think, I'm Paul McCartney. Freaking hell. I can't believe this. I'm Paul McCartney. I'm on stage with the Beatles. It's a total freak out, says the current Paul McCartney. Now why would he say that unless he's telling us that he's not Paul McCartney? I am dead. I am dead. I am dead. Paul McCartney on the left, the original one, and the false one on the, on the right. I believe that the clues tell directly and indirectly all of these facts, evidence, details, and proof that unfortunately the original Paul McCartney died in 1966 and that he was replaced by William Shear Campbell who is a fantastic musician. The facts, evidence, details, and proof. What do you think? I already told you what my opinion is. Paul is dead. But what do you believe? With all the information that I gave you, all of these facts, evidence, details, and proof, do you feel that there's enough evidence to understand that a switcheroo was done by the British secret police, MFI, in order to prevent mass suicide all over the world? His last resting place. Is this Paul McCartney last resting place? Isn't it a coincidence that there is a cemetery that state rest in peace James Paul McCartney. 18th of June 1942 was his birth, 11th September 1966. And there's a guitar on there. Now why would there be something like this? Because this is the real name of Paul McCartney, James Paul McCartney. And this is when he died. Please support our channel by subscribing to Tricky Mickey. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoy bringing you all of these videos for your edification. I gave you all the facts, evidence, details, proof. Now you analyze for yourself. Think for yourself. Do you believe that Paul McCartney died in 1966 and was replaced by a very gifted lookalike? Thank you for listening and watching this video with me. This is Tricky Mickey. Until next time, take care of yourself and bye.